So today we're gonna rebuild the Chicago Cubs, my favorite team. And I think the Cubs had a decent off season. I think a lot of the players that they got are kind of like what if players slash like risk reward type situations. Mancini, Bellinger, Hosmer, Dansby, Swanson's probably like the most surefire bet. You've got Edwin Rios, Jameson Tyone I thought was a good pickup too. I think the off season was pretty good. If things go well, Cubs could be a surprise team. But the National League is a really strong side of MLB and to make the postseason, you're gonna be like, you've, you've gotta be perfect. So with that being said, I think the Cubs have put themselves in a really good spot to contend. Let's go win a World Series. All right, really quickly, let's go through the team. You know, I think the addition of Dansby Swanson with Nico Horner at second is gonna be great for pitchers, especially without the shift this year in half coming off of a really solid season. Edwin Rios, I think could be a sneaky pickup for the Cubs. I think that power could really help them out. Seiya Suzuki just needs to stay healthy. He's proven when he's healthy, he's a good player. Morel, his face scan looks terrible. Face scans in general this year for MLB The Show look so bad. Like they gotta find something out. I'm hoping roster update fixes it because Christopher Morel right there looks like a retired 50 year old. Like I don't, I don't know what's going on. Trey Mancini, I think is a good veteran pickup for the Cubs. Jan Gomes, solid catcher behind the plate and another what if Cody Bellinger. Eric Hosmer, I thought was just like not a good pickup for the Cubs. You've got Matt Mervis, just use him. Patrick Wisdom, Barnhart, Madrigal, and then McKinstry. You look at the farm system, you've got players like Brennan Davis, who's coming off of back surgery from last year. Matt Mervis, who was absolutely crushing it in AAA last season. David Bodie, battles injuries, hits the ball hard, but really doesn't have a place with the Cubs right now. Nelson Velasquez, We've got Alexander Canario, you've got Alcantara, you've got PCA. A lot of exciting prospects in the Cubs organization. Wisniewski is nasty. You've got Cade Horton, who was a pick last year. Javier Assad looked really good in the World Baseball Classic. Braylon Marquez, is he gonna be that hyped up prospect or are we past that? Um, who else? Who else? Jordan Wicks looks like he's starting to put some things together. DJ Hers, I think, is very underrated. I don't think he's going to be a starter, but there's definitely some potential there as like a long inning reliever, and his stuff's just nasty. He strikes out so many players. But as a whole, I think the Cubs have done a pretty decent job to put somewhat of a team together and at least kind of find some building blocks for the future years. So with this team, you know, you kind of start to look at it. There's some there's some good players there. So we'll have to wait and see. But let's get to the draft. For the draft, I totally forgot we had the hold on let me get to it 12th pick 13th pick i totally forgot about that the thing is i was scouting around the area we have some really good picks in this draft they're just not going to make it to me first one he was ranked 17th by mlb he's our first ranked player i want this guy i'm not going to get him but i want him uh, he opted out, which worries me a little bit for the health, but this guy looks absolutely insane. Damon Noblis. I think he has potential to be a, a generational talent. I don't know if he is going to be, though. I've never seen a pitching generational talent yet, but if there was one, this guy could definitely be it. Uh, Terrell Pena is like the number one player in the class. Like, just, just is. Uh, he's 23. He's a little bit on the older side, but this guy, the contact versus left, the power versus left, the vision, he looks good he looks like he's just gonna be a very good player he's got decent fielding good reactions decent stealing like he just looks like he's gonna be a very good mlb ready talent so i doubt we're gonna get to him but i wanted to show you that um castillo looks also really solid at 21 years old really safe pick 19 years old a second baseman also got some good secondaries, but again, probably not going to make it to us. Players that might make it to us, this guy right here, even though he's ranked third by MLB, eighth by us. Ninth is Elijah Ham. Again, another player that if he can sneak to us somehow, I'd be pretty happy with. He looks like he could be a pretty decent player. Power numbers are pretty low, so there's that. Len Fleming is a player that they have at 19, but we have at 10. He is injured. So he's probably someone that I'm not going to look at just because of the injury. It's a little worrisome, but he does look pretty good. He does look pretty good. At 11, we've got Russell Holloway. Again, I think he's going to be another one of those safe picks. Yeah, the potential is not that A potential, but good arm strength, good arm accuracy, speed, stealing. Fielding is absolutely atrocious. They've got to find a way to make outfielders better fielding wise, but the contact, the vision, the discipline look pretty solid. So I think this guy is just a really good hitter and could help us out. We've got another right fielder, Herman Rodriguez. They have him at 26. We have him at 12, 18 years old. He's opted out for the exam, but again, looks like a power hitter. And I would love to add some power to the team. Again, looks terrible fielding wise though. Uh, we've got Eloy Urbina, a pitcher. Looks good. 
I think this is a pick that we could really get. And then we've got a reliever. And then I've got some other players down the line that we could potentially look at. Um, this guy, I might reach for him if uh, the other players get picked. Uh, he looks like he's just going to be a good catcher. Wasn't ranked. We discovered him. He had. We have him at 20. High potential. Decent overall. Yeah, he's 21 years old, but he's 73% interested in us. Bonus demand is low, but bonus demand is a motivation. So even though he isn't asking for much money, if we throw some more money at him, he'll probably sign. But the hitting numbers look great. The contact, the vision, the discipline has that arm strength. If we don't get a player that we want, I'll just reach and take that guy. Like that's really what it is. Could take a picture as well. So we'll see. We'll see. Let's go. Start the draft. Let's do it. Oh, I was slouching hard for that one. Posture check. Let's see who goes number one it is okay yeah 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 pena pena terrell pena third baseman i mean he's good that is a safe pick that is a good pick i think he's gonna be very good pick number two it is i couldn't read the back but um who is it who is it give me it steve castillo we had him at number four but again a really really strong pick i mean can't go wrong with that i think he's gonna be mlb ready for sure for the nationals Pick number three, uh, I believe that's what, Koo, I think his name was. Yeah, Tom Koo, again, a really good pick. I like it, I like it. All right, so now we've gotta wait and I'm not gonna wait. I mean, who would I want out of these if we could get somebody? I want Noblis. So Gillespie gets picked. I didn't have him on my board at all. Again, could, could be good. Has absolutely no power based on our scouting report that we have of him, but there's that. Elijah Ham is a player that I, I had on the board. Not Yeah, I mean, again, looks really good. Looks really solid. I want Noblis, please fall to us. Brian O'Brien, why would you do that to, to your kid? You know, Brian O'Brien, you're really gonna do that to your kid? Brian O'Brien, Russell Holloway, okay. Okay, that was a player I was interested in. I think that's a safe pick. I have to get through so many more picks for Noblis not to get chosen. I don't know if I can do this to myself. Barry Martinez, okay, cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it roll. Let's see what happens. All right, the pick before us. Don't you dare take Damon Noblis. I will fight you if you do. He is available. We're gonna take him. He has opted out of the doctor's exam, which does worry me. We could take. Oh, he opted out as well. But I, I, I think I gotta take him. Right? Like that is just too good to pass up. Or do I take the catcher who also opted out? But I feel like a catcher is a tough position to, to tough position to get. But you know what? We have him as the number one player in the draft. I got to see it. Can I get a pitching generational talent? Can we do it? Damon Noblis, your Chicago Cub. Please don't be injured. If he opts out, if he opted out and he's injured, we're screwed. All right. So the catcher was taken for round two. I'm trying to see if I can find him. Let me see. All right, so he was taken 48th by the, the Red Sox, which it's unfortunate, it is, um, but again, it's uh, it, it was a risk, and, and that's okay. So we are at pick 61. We have this guy, Cortez, 31. Again, looks like a really good player. I'm gonna take him. I'm trying to see if we have anybody else. Let me add him to the, the queue. We had a couple other players that I, I scouted for a little bit later in the draft, and um, most of the time, these guys are like 65%. But because we had such a kind of a weird pick, 12th pick, I wanted to kind of get all the players around there. So I'm going to take Cortez here. I got another pitcher, but I'm okay with that. All right. McKnight got taken three or yeah, three picks before us. That's tough. That's tough. He does look pretty good though, but um, I'm going to take Nap here. Another pitcher. Like I said, I, uh, I kind of scouted pitchers and uh, we'll take them. And I feel like that's going to be my last pick. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about any others. I guess we could take some shots in the dark, but I feel like I feel like we did pretty good. I'm pretty happy with what we did. I'm going to let the CPU handle the rest. Let's go see how we did. Here we got Damon Noblis signed up. I think that's huge. He's healthy as well, which is um so let's get some of the other guys that we had scouted. Let's get um Oh, these are just our other guesses. So fourth round pick was Forrest Norris. Um, I guess we could we could throw him on and hope maybe he'll sign. But um, okay, not bad. Geraldo Cortez signs with us as well. Had to throw him a little bit more money, but that got the job done. And then I'm gonna go with I like this guy's mutton chops better. We're gonna rock with that guy. 
it doesn't really matter but we've got we've got a couple picks left let's see where we're at with nap he is draft position wise okay so we might actually be able to maybe maybe go like that okay so he signs with us that's perfect and let's just get this last guy on and then i'll see you guys for the last signing day and let's see if we get them all right last try last chance to sign some players norris does sign he looks absolutely huge at 19 years old we're gonna go with let's see here we'll go darren brett next and he declines unfortunate but we'll be okay there and then we'll throw this guy some money he also declines so four of six not not bad not bad okay let's see how we did all right so here we go we are at the view draft picks which is the day after the day after the signing deadline boom view draft picks is going to be at the bottom and uh, let's go find those other picks first all right uh herman rodriguez or herman rodriguez 85 potential so that was one guy we looked at uh terrell pena or pena was the third baseman i thought was a safe bet b potential 74 overall 82 potential not bad a uh, tom ku which was what the third pick fourth pick uh went to the tigers 86 potential all right elijah ham was the name i looked at um not bad for a third baseman 86 potential 68 overall has got some really good hitting stats so that's good of the first round pick sean gillespie has the highest potential that i've seen so far really good hitting stats really really good hitting stats 95 potential but i for the first round picks that's that's kind of it from what i've noticed steve castillo's there with 83 and we had 89 potential for damon nobles so not the generational talent i was hoping for but you know what i'm pretty happy with that and we followed it up with cortez who has 87 potential as well nap 77 potential but he's already at a 65 so like not bad and then forrest norris is uh 47 overall but 87 potential and the, all these guys 19 years old six foot five 18 six foot three 26 foot three 18 five foot 11 all right but um you know what i'm pretty happy with that all right so we made it as a wild card team playing the cardinals wasn't expecting the postseason in season one but i'll take it i'll take it so pete alonzo is your mvp along with shohei otani which means he's going to be cy young winner degrom he wait a second degrom won cy young otani got second okay I mean, he was actually good. Um, 10 triples, 46 home runs, crazy offensive season, and also a crazy pitching season too. I mean, I think he could have won Cy Young. All right, Trout and Urias. I kind of forgot that like DeGrom was a, a Texas Ranger for a second. That's why I was like, DeGrom, wait a second. Uh, Minter, Fairbanks, reliever of the year. Grayson Rodriguez is the rookie of the year. And it's not Tatis, it's gonna be Garrett Mitchell that is the rookie of the year for the NL. Okay. So it looks like some of this got changed up. That's a quick fix. All right, looking at the bullpen, Drew Smiley, our long reliever, wasn't that great, but yeah, it just wasn't that great. Uh, Michael Fulmer was pretty solid in this relief role. Brandon Hughes, solid. I'll definitely take that. Cody Hoyer, also very good. Love to see it. Keegan Thompson, I don't know. I don't know what this was. That's it. I, I was in between like a, a fist and like a thumbs up, but yeah, Keegan Thompson did quite well. So did Alzali in the setup role. Okay, and then Brad Boxberger. I thought I had um, Hoyer in the setup role, but I guess I I guess I didn't move him over fully. Uh, Strowman was fantastic in that number one spot. Tyone right behind him, solid as well. Hendricks, I'll take that. He has one more year left on his deal, which is, I think it's time, yeah. Uh, Justin Steele, eh. And then Wisniewski, whose potential went up. And all right, I'll take that for sure. Not a bad season at all. All right, let's take a look at our offensive side of things. Yikes, not great. 12 home runs okay I, I had him in the lefty lineup so it's okay barnhart e madrigal eh. and uh, brendan davis got called up had 29 at bats and did quite well in that span so who got sent down oh hosmer hosmer got sent down eh, it's okay it's okay it, like you know like eh. uh nico horner what do we've got here probably should take him out of the leadoff role but it's an okay year ian happ i've extended his contract for the next five years because he's just really good in franchise so let's keep him around swanson's potential went up to a even though he didn't have that good of a year uh, okay uh kind of like a career like average year but potential went up so interesting edwin rios hit 23 home runs i think if we can get him on a, a very similar cheap deal we'll keep him around as like a platoon bat say as yikes not good uh morel yikes not good uh mancini was was okay not bad not great uh gomes wasn't that great either and he's regressing very quickly so we need a catcher 
priority number one catcher and then cody ballinger not that great either uh, not going to pay him 17 mil which isn't actually his deal in real life if i'm correct i think it's i think it's like 10 11 but it, maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong about the contract but i feel like that's a little bit high cody ballinger sucked anyways postseason time let's see how we do lose the first win the second lose the third and that's okay it's not it's not meant to be this year let's get to the offseason i need a catcher i need possibly some pitching and then I also just, I, I need a little bit of help offensively. So the Dodgers defeat the Twins in the World Series. Interesting. And now let's see what's going on here. Who do we turn to? What are we going to do? Let me see. So, I mean, Mervis could go to first. Outfield still like in the air a little bit. Let me see what we're looking like really quickly. Like Canario's a 63. PCA is 71. Brandon Davis is a 70. Okay. 78 like where could we, i mean i'm not too sure about morel what's mervis looking like i could give mervis a shot at first base this is the big the big one and then maybe like maybe maybe a bullpen arm maybe a, a back end rotation guy we'll see I, th I think we're i think we don't need to go too crazy though i forgot to point out the catcher for the red sox kenny martin who we looked at 62 overall b potential honestly looks really good um and i want him but I'm going to let the Red Sox have him. We missed out on him. I don't want to just go out and start training for some prospects that we missed. I was looking for a catcher, though, because uh, the free agency market's pretty bad. And I can't really rely on these two. And I don't know if Luis Torrens is really the guy moving forward either. Same thing with the Mig Miguel Amaya. I don't, I don't really know if I can... Even in real life, I don't know if I trust him being the catcher for the Cubs moving forward. So, like, I got to I gotta find a catcher or may, maybe this year just rely on Torrens and one of these two as the backups. I looked at Jonah Heim. Jonah Heim doesn't look too bad. I'm intrigued. I might go for Jonah Heim once the season starts. If I don't get Jonah Heim, then we're probably... I'm going to try to find one in the draft. We'll see. Season two, I'm noticing I have a lot of role players that, like, I just don't want anymore. Zach McKinstry is one of them. We've got... Who else? Ah. Patrick Wisdom, potentially. I don't know, maybe keep him off the bench. Nick Madrigal is a guy that I might phase out of the team as well. And we've just got like, where where is he? Like David Bodie's here still. We just we just got to find a way to get rid of some of these players that like, I just don't see as part of the team. And because when you look at it, look like my bench is just cluttered. It's so cluttered. I actually want Mervis playing first base. And I just feel like we need to find a way to kind of, clean out some of it maybe get some prospects in return just just something right like because like right now i'm i'm three players over the limit and as you can see the big money purchase bringing shohei to chicago and i've been a huge person that has been saying that shohei otani wants to win wherever he ends up going you know it's going to be a team that gives him a chance to win a world series but also of course it's going to be about money too and I don't know if the Cubs are going to be one of those teams that actually go after him. The Cubs were actually one of the final teams within contention to sign Otani before he signed with the Angels. So there's a possibility that he could be a Cub. But do I expect him to be? No, I don't. I don't even know if the Cubs had the financial pull to get him. I had to give him a max deal. And the Cubs do have the financial means to make the deal happen. It just depends on if the owners want to do it, which they don't like spending too much money. So let's figure this team out. I, I do want to get rid of some of these like extra role players. I think Nelson Velasquez, I like him as a player, but I don't know if he really fits this rebuild, especially when we have Brendan Davis, we have PCA, you know, there's a couple other guys I brought in. Yu Chang coming off a great world baseball classic. I thought, you know what, let's, let's bring him into the team. And uh, just a couple others. Nick Madrigal, I think, is uh, on the way out, even though he's been practicing third base in real life. So maybe he'll get some innings there. But let's let's just go try to find. I'm, I'm in need of some like relievers and uh, some help there. So maybe we can get some like just backups. All right. Zach McKinstry is going to the Mariners for Bryce Miller, a pitcher, a pitcher. So is Cosmo like a really popular name that I don't know about? Because I feel like Cosmo is in every single draft class. Every single year, there's a Cosmo. And I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I've never met a Cosmo. I don't think I've ever even, I don't even know anybody that knows a Cosmo. Like, you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to pick up this Richard Lyons guy. And I hope that they want David Bodie. They do. Perfect. And then what are we at? I think we're still two, two players over. I mean, I guess I could send down Velasquez, but that leaves us a little thin outfield wise. And we're still one player over. Am I over on a pitcher? Oh yeah, I am over on a pitcher. I need to get rid of one of these older pitchers in Smiley or Samson. And they're both pretty similar. 
I'm going to go with Samson's got arbitration. Smiley's going to become a free agent. So let's see if we can find somebody towards the bottom here that'll help us out. Let's go with, let's go to, ooh, who do I want? All right, Drew Smiley is going to get me Junior Marte and Garrett Stubbs. And uh, that's my backup catcher in Garrett Stubbs. Possibly starter. I, I don't really know yet. We're going we're gonna to figure that out. Um, Miguel Maya can be our double-A catcher. But, so yeah, team currently looks like this. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks pretty good. We brought in nobody for the pitching spots. I'm going to let Hoyer be the closer. Alzali did really well in the setup role. I'm going to leave him there. Bullpen, going to be hit or miss. It is. Um, but with Otani in the rotation, I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm pretty happy with the rotation as a whole. Lineup-wise, we're going to look like this. I didn't change up the team too much more. Because, like, again, we did well. We made the postseason. I definitely think we should have added a little bit. But I want to see, like, how quickly PCA develops. How quickly Brennan Davis develops. And a couple others. And I think if we can get those guys into the lineup somehow... And then kind of adjust accordingly. Like I said, I might end up trading for another catcher. Or if I get lucky and I draft a crazy catcher, we'll be good. Realistically, I don't see the Cubs being a competitor like this year in real life. I would think maybe like this is the year where I pick up Otani, where we really start to become a postseason team. But looking at the squad, this is definitely not a postseason team. And we need a little bit more. So I don't, I just don't know where to go. Because like, I don't want to block PCA, Brendan Davis. Christopher Morrell potentially is someone that I could look to upgrade. Especially with a, like a platoon that hits lefties really well. But that's kind of what Patrick Wisdom's for. And then I guess let's see how Matt Mervis does. And if things aren't looking great, we go get a first baseman. Shortstop left and second are done. So it's really just dependent on 6, 7, 8, and 9. <clears throat> and we go from there. Let's see what happens so we're in the draft as you see i have a bunch of starters and the queue i wasn't able to find a catcher but i think i found a really good technique to find some some scouted players i think i really did so what i did was i would take a scout that was really good at like high efficiency and what i would do from there is i would then find a position so like he was a really good uh he had a really high pitcher rating and really high efficiency what I would do is I would look through the top 100 for pitchers and I would look at where they were born and see if there was like a big portion of those players in a specific region. I noticed Central and West had quite a few starting pitchers. So I, for five weeks, assigned that scout to starting pitching Central. And then I switched after five weeks to starting pitching West. And then I got up to week 10. At week 10, I then switched them over. I think I did starting pitching East just to kind of cover the whole United States. But then when I noticed that I had a player at like, I think it was like the last four weeks when I got to week 10, what I would do is I would take my remaining two scouts. And if I found that there was a player, this one says 95, but say the scouting progress was at like 50%, I would assign another scout to a player with like 50% scouting so that I could get him as close to 100% as possible. And that's actually why a lot of these starting pitchers, I have like 95%, 85%. One player is just scouting the whole region of starting pitchers. And then I'd have a second one to kind of finish up the, the rest of the progress. So I have a lot of diamonds in the rough this year. And um, let me show you my, my board. So we've got Jake uh, Fabregas, who 57th in MLB, but he's the number one ranked player. We've got Freddie Bove, who is 59th. We've got him at three. Pena, 76. We've got him at six. We've got Dorta, who is 86. We got him at ninth. 18th got him at 10th, so that's not too far of a stretch. But 26 got him at 14. 31 got him at 15. This one's about the same, but if he can fall to us at 29, I'd be pretty happy. Um, 40 got him at 18. 39 got him at 19, 63 got him at 21, and then um, this one's about the same as well. But you can kind of see I've got, yeah, like 57 got him at 1, 86 got him at 9. We talked about him. I think that's kind of it. I think we've covered all the players that I wanted to talk about. I think that's, I think that's it because the rest of the players I didn't really get to scout that much because I, I, I found this, or like we also found out like specific players who were ranked highly and actually are lower on the board. So like that guy was number five, this guy was number eight, we have him at 46, uh, 23, he's actually 53. So um, yeah, 
it actually works out pretty well. So in season three, I'll actually show you uh, the draft process really quickly so you guys can kind of see, put it, put it image to what I'm talking about and actually understand what it is. So that way you'll get to see it. But yeah, I, I think that's a pretty sneaky move for uh, scouting. It might be the move to do. The number one overall pick is, looks pretty short. So I don't think it's gonna be a picture, uh, pitch. Oh, it is a picture, it's Vesperas. Fourth, fourth. So yeah, this was the one guy I scouted just to see if he would sit in the top five. And I'm okay with that. I just want some of our sneaky picks to drop to us. I really hope they do. But I've also noticed that the CPU does pick some good players, regardless if they're ranked high or not. So who is this? Michael James, another one of those high ranked players. All right. Oh man, I'm I'm like kind of like pumped about this tactic. This might be the way to go. And like, this might really help me out with the draft rebuild that I want to get out here in the next couple days. So this is... Kurt Melendez, right fielder. He was a guy that like, yeah, he's he's a good right fielder. Like that that looks pretty solid. So I'm not even gonna wait. I just I'm gonna skip to our pick and let's see what happens. All right. So the top player that I wanted was Jake Fabregas. The Padres took him. Ah, oh, dude, really? Man, I wanted him so badly. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I think that's the only one, right? I guess Rivera as well um, looks like he's pretty good, but we've still got the third ranked player, the sixth ranked. Did number two go? Number two did go. It was P uh, Pedro Lorenz. I didn't scout him just because I knew he would probably be off the board. So we've got the third ranked player. Do we take him? He's 18 years old. His strikeouts per nine is so low. Zero to 16. Good Lord. Um. Ooh, his potential is nice too. 95% scouted, 95% scouted. He looks pretty good as well. He's ninth, he's 15th. You know what? I'm gonna take a chance. He's ranked third. We got it. We gotta go with him, right? Is there anybody else that like could potentially be the guy? This guy. He's ranked 15th. He could be the one as well. It's just the range is so far. 15. What's his range? 16. Ah man. Let's see. Del Gaudio looks pretty good as well a lot of pitchers a lot of pitchers and let's see i mean i feel like we can't go wrong right i feel like any pick that we take is pretty good the 80 to 96 80 to 96 82 to 98 he is only 95 percent scouted though so i wish i could have gotten just a little bit more on the uh the scouting report let's see anybody not healthy no they're all healthy too I'm going to take this guy. Yeah. I'm going to go Freddy Bove or Bovey. I'm going to go Freddy Bovey. 59th draft rank for MLB, but we have him at number three. Freddy Bovey. All right. So we lost our second pick because of the Otani signing. So we don't get a pick until round three. So all these guys might be gone by then. So let's see what happens. They are all gone. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Del Gaudio went to the Guardians. Stone went to the Orioles. Let's see who else got taken really quickly. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Come on. Where, where are Did they all just like just now get taken? What? I think they did. Let's see. Ooh, Rondell McHenry. There's one. We've got Pena. Oh, dang. Okay. So Pena was taken, obviously. Um, Dorto was taken as well. He also looks very good. Um, he was ninth in the class. Uh, Wild was about the same. Okay, so yeah, all of our guys were taken. Um, I think we still have a couple though, like not ranked to 76, another pitcher, not ranked to 89th, not ranked to 91st. And uh, yeah, I think this is the guy to go with. Actually, this guy's a little bit higher rated, less potential. Let's go with this guy. Draft Mark Schaefer. He did opt out, but I still have faith. Next pick. Let's see, we've got one more. He's ranked 89th, so let's let's draft him. But I think this technique is, this little scouting tactic might be the move. I don't have any more scouted players. We're in round four. Did I get like anybody up to like 20% or something? I did not. All right, so you know what? Since I'm out of ideas, let's just sim the rest of the draft. I think the first couple though were pretty solid. All right, we're 12 days away from the signing deadline. I'm gonna try to sign Freddy. He is motivated by bonus demand we don't have a lot of money so i can't really afford to go too crazy but let's do it he has signed awesome love to see it i'm gonna try to sign this guy as well what's his motivation draft position well we got him at 95 but he was ranked 76 so like 
We've got him at 81%. I'll bump it up to 500k. He has decided to sign. Mark Schaefer is now a Cub as well. Hinojosa, I'm going to wait. And then... I'll throw these two on. We'll see if they're any good, but let's let's go a few more days. All right, we're six days out. I'm gonna try to sign this guy. What's his what's his uh bonus money? Okay, wait, hold on. Yeah, signing motivation is bonus demand. I don't have that much more money, so let's go like that. He signs awesome, love to see it. And then he's up to 68%. We don't really know. I'll try to sign him anyways. Let's let's bump him up to 70. He signs perfect. That was actually a catcher. I just don't think he's going to be any good. And then we'll wait for this guy because we can't uh, attempt to sign him anyways. We have to wait till 50%. So a couple more days left. We're at the deadline the last day or the day before the signing deadline for your prospects. And Luis Torrens, honestly, not bad. He might be a cheap little catcher to pick up. The thing is, I don't know how much more he's going to improve. So I'm going to go out and just get another catcher. Garrett Stubbs has been pretty atrocious anyways. I don't think there's really any big name catchers coming up in free agency in the next like year um, a name that i looked at was mj melendez who's actually now on the pirates and he actually got traded last year but he looks really good really good like really really good um so i'm kind of intrigued by that on top of that though jonah Hine is another guy that i think would make a lot of sense the Cubs have actually like kind of come out and said that they're looking for players who can sit behind the dish and be kind of like a orchestrator of the game. Jonah Heim is good behind the plate. He is. Uh, MJ Melendez, not so much. Even like so much so that they're trying to move him like out of that area. So like I'm also kind of intrigued by Jonah Heim. So I think I'm going to switch it up. MJ Melendez is really cool and all, but I'm going to go with Stubbs. I'm going to also trade... Mancini because he's doing terribly and oh, wait hold on maybe I just keep him and would Madrigal get the deal done no so I'm gonna go Mancini and then also another player that I'm not gonna use anymore and that is going to be Levi Jordan and that's gonna give us Jonah Heim I guess all right Cody Bellinger's get me Tanner Houck of the Red Sox he's terrible he's so bad Cody Bellinger so there's my new reliever I need quite a few relievers actually so I'm gonna try to find as many as I can get that aren't doing terribly. So they're, yeah, it, it's just not going too well at all. So, oh, I made Braylon Marquez a reliever. I want to test him out in this spot. And in AAA, he's not doing great, but he's already gone from like a low, like a mid 50 to, uh, I think it was like 57. He's already gone up to a 60. So I'm going to, I'm going to test it out. We're going to see how it does. And also, I think I need to trade Kyle Hendricks. He's having a great year, but let's go get somebody <laughs> let's just go get somebody i don't know who though let's let's find anybody that might work not sandlin is there any b potential players like luis cabrera how's he doing and then single a can't tell what about duran i mean it's not too far off so like i kind of want to try it out how's barlow is he going to improve much more arbitration he's 28 let's can i get barlow I can and some. Ooh, that's tempting. Munoz is struggling. Matt Brash struggling. Jordan Hicks, Jonathan Hernandez. Jonathan Hernandez is not bad. They say they need pitching too. All right, let me let me get that. How's Leclerc? Regressing. What's his contract? He's a free agent this year. Mm, I'm gonna pass. I need somebody though. Somebody else. Who who else are we gonna trade with the Rangers? Actually. Yeah, let's trade with the Rangers. Let's get Jonathan Hernandez and also give me Brock Burke. Deal. Sure. All right, so this is the team after those moves. Alzali is going to hopefully turn things around. If not, we do have Adrian Sampson here. Assad's not doing too bad. Jordan Wicks isn't doing too bad. We've got 400 relievers down here, so we're going to have to sort that out as well. And then we've got Nobles who's turning up in double A. Cortez is not doing too bad either. Okay. All right. We've got a so many pitchers now so many pitchers and then lineup wise this is what we're looking like here brendan davis has made his debut let's do it all right Derek cisneros our round six pick declines us all right so he's the only one that didn't sign with us that's okay we missed out on one i'm not too worried about it contract extensions i think the only one i would consider is stroman's regressing so i'm gonna pass what's his contract i think we're good I think I'm pretty good on where we're at. So let's let's take a quick look 
around the league. 92 potential. 92 potential at 18 years old. 64 overall. Not too bad at all. Let's go take a look at the other pitchers. So we didn't have a chance at him, but Vesperas was 88 potential, 72 overall. The right fielder, Kurt Melendez, fielding is terrible, but his hitting stats look pretty good. B potential for him. Jake Fabregas, 96 potential, 20 years old, and uh, looks really similar to the guy we've got. 67 overall as well, so pretty similar. Cruz had 83 potential. Garlobo, 72 overall, 21-year-old with 97 potential. Velasco had 92 potential, and I think that was it, but I'm happy with that. 92 potential, 88 potential, 76 potential, and we got a 51 overall catcher with 90 potential, so not bad. So another postseason appearance as a wild card team, and we're going to be taking on the Mets, which is going to be a tough matchup for us. We have a league leader, Otani with home runs 51 and RBIs 132. Jake McCarthy, you got to get Jake McCarthy, he's insane. Get Jake McCarthy. I feel like this is the second video I've said you got to get Jake McCarthy. Get Jake McCarthy. He's, he's insane. He's absolutely insane in this game. Go and get yourself Jake McCarthy. All right, rookie of the year, Matt Mervis. Otani is MVP. There we go. That's a big boost for us. Trout wins it on the other side. McClanahan and Corbin Burns are Cy Young winners. Freeman, Jordan are the batting title winners. Class A and Helsley, relievers of the year. And like we said, Matt Mervis was Rookie of the Year with Kenneth Smith and Jigba. I should have got him involved in the Pirates rebuild, and I feel bad that I didn't because he actually does pretty well if you give him an opportunity, and I just didn't do it. You can kind of see he's he's pretty good. Honestly, I think he should have won it over Mervis, so that, that's my take. Uh, Soderstrom won it on the other side, beating out Big P and Veen, who is now with the Mariners. Okay, um, I'm going to fix the pitching. It's going to be a mess. All right, we're going to rock with the extra long reliever for the postseason. We've got Alzali, who brought his ERA down as a long reliever, so I'm pretty happy with that. Samson came in, gave us 20 innings of really good pitching. Fulmer was solid. Yikes. Uh, <laughs> Hernandez was good, so I'm happy about that. Keegan Thompson, for some reason, the CPU sent him down. I'm pretty happy with those numbers. Tanner Houck was great in the setup role. And then Cody Hoyer, good job, good job. Next up, Otani. I mean, come on. What more could you ask for? Those offensive numbers and pitching numbers are disgusting. Strowman, ERA went up a little bit. Last year of his contract, we'll probably move on and try to find a new pitcher. Tyone was very solid. We've got him for a couple more years. As long as he can hold his rating, I'll be pretty happy. Steele was good. And then Wisniewski still needs to develop a little bit more. Who would take his spot? Nobody just yet. Yeah, we don't really have anybody that can take his spot. Huh. So we might have to we might have to go and get a pitcher. Next up, the bench. Wisdom has some pop, so I'll I'll, keep, I'll take it. Canario's called up, even though I don't think he's really ready. Rios only had 12 at bats. It's tough to judge him on that. It really is. Kevin Biggio was was pretty solid at 200 at bats, though. I'll take that. I did sign him in free agency, gave him a two-year deal. Pretty good as a platoon guy. And then Torrens, like I said, is a good catcher, like a good little cheap catcher. I like it. So. Here we go. There you go. 350 average in the leadoff role for Nico Horner. Ian Happ had a good season. Swanson was, was about career average. Um, Otani we looked at already. Suzuki improved, which is good to see. Morel also improved. Good to see. Mervis was somehow rookie of the year. Jonah Heim. We'll see how he does once we give him a full year with the team. Brendan Davis was solid really solid i'll take that that's those are some good numbers and then back to the top of the order so Pico armstrong i might they de de debut him next year but how that's the issue <laughs> how am i gonna get him into the team like suzuki could play third is that the move but then where does morel go you know what i mean that's that's like kind of our issue we just like don't have Cause like Mervis was decent, but like we don't, we also don't have anybody that like could play first base. If Morel, you, you see what I'm saying? So like I would like to get PCA into the team because I think I think he's the best prospect the Cubs have. But like where does like do I send Brennan Davis to the bench or do I let Brennan Davis get like another season and if it doesn't go well then we call it PCA? That's that's probably what I do. Because what we gave him a half a, like a like a, a fourth of a season just over a fourth of a season 
So maybe we give him up until like the all-star break. If he's doing well, we keep him there. If not, PCA steps in. I think that's the move. Anybody else that could potentially help us? Madrigal is probably going to go. Yu Chang was pretty bad. Not even going to look at his numbers. I know they were bad. Triantos is slowly moving up. And then Alcantara is a 70. I think he's another high ceiling player. It just depends on how he develops. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We are a postseason team again against the Mets. We advance. There we go. Take it on the Dodgers now. Definitely going to be a tough situation, but let's do it. Let's do it. Game one, we win. Game two, we lose. We lose the third. We're still alive. We're not going to let Wisniewski pitch. We are going to go to Otani on short rest. Eight to one. That's okay. We advanced a little bit further this year. And we're getting there. We're getting there. It's time to get a pitcher as the Guardians defeat the Braves. Time to get a pitcher. Maybe a bat if needed, but not really. I don't think we need a bat. I think we need some pitching. I think that's what's kind of held us back. So I'll pick up this option. Pick up this option. Um, Yeah, lefties are always good to have. Sure, why not? Just in case we need a backup. Michael Fulmer, he's still holding the rating. How much does he want for a year as a bullpen arm? Five million? Make it six. And then everybody else can go. Thank you, Marcus Stroman, for your solid performances. But it, we just got to take it up another level. So here we go. Let's... Oh, we're not losing Pete Crow Armstrong. No, no, no. Add him to the team. We'll, we'll make sure we don't lose any of those other guys either. But offensively, I mean, like, if I really wanted to, it'd probably be a first baseman. But I think Matt Mervis will give him another shot. Kind of the same thing with Brennan Davis. Give him to the all-star break slash deadline if they're not doing well. Then we replace him. Overall, I think offensively, we're a pretty decent team. I think our pitching was just a little bit behind some of the better teams in the league. So let's go out and let's go get a number, number two slash number three in the rotation. And then go from there. All right, so season three, only one big splash, and that was Shane Bieber. Go and get that second pitcher in the rotation. Outside of that, you can kind of see Tanner Houck we traded for, and the bullpen is kind of the same. I did go out and sign just some depth pieces like Jose LeClerc, but for the most part, we, we're kind of deep on bullpen arms. I just need them to perform. And then offensively, we're still the same. Nothing changed. I like the team. I think we just needed to step it up pitching wise. And I think we got that pitcher. Nothing against what Marcus Stroman was doing because he was putting up really good numbers. I just feel like he was regressing. Let's go out and get somebody that's just slight, slightly better. So there we go. We'll see how the bullpen holds down. We might also need to change up something just to elevate the team a little bit more. Maybe say a Suzuki just isn't the guy for a rebuild. You know, maybe Matt Mervis isn't Jonah Heim or anybody on this team realistically. I don't know, we'll, we'll find it out. So let's get to that scouting technique that I was talking about, and then we'll get through season three. All right, so for the scouting tactic, let me talk to you about this. So season three's draft, I'm not gonna focus on it too much because I don't think we're gonna have a good enough player that'll feature in the, in the rebuild. But what I did was I tried to find high efficiency, high whatever. So we've got really good scouts here. Like these are really good scouts. Um, we've got 95 efficiency with like 82 pitchers, 83 position players. 89 efficiency 93 pitchers and then like just super well-rounded so what i'm gonna do here is let me just see we've got team rank starting pitchers up right and so what i did was i just kind of looked to see where a majority of these players are from so we've got venezuela west virginia illinois venezuela california pennsylvania venezuela wisconsin the dominican dominican Pennsylvania, Vermont, Venezuela again, New York. So I'm noticing a lot of international pitchers, also a lot of Illinois, Wisconsin, but also the East Coast too. So what I did was, I will say we saw a lot of international prospects, right? Scout position, starting pitcher, international. He has high efficiency, high pitcher rating. And as you can see, he's going to accrue 2% interest per week per player and 10% 10% scouting per week per player, all right? So to get 100%, you're gonna need 10 weeks, but we're just gonna let him sit here and scout every single starting pitcher from the international region that's already in the player pool. If you feel like you wanna scout some more players or discover some more players, go ahead and discover new prospects. But that was what I did last draft, and that is how I found all those like diamonds in the rough pitchers. So what I'll do is I'll also do that with um, this guy right here who's got 95 efficiency. 
and I'm going to scout a prospect. Let me see if I can find it with maybe a position that looks a little juiced. Maybe like left field doesn't look too bad. Shortstop doesn't look too bad either. That, that position actually looks pretty strong. I might go to shortstop there. All right, so shortstop. We've got Ohio, Indiana, Georgia, Venezuela, Canada, California, Texas. Oh, they're kind of spread out. Oh, boy. Oh, wait, that was all of them. Oh, okay, so we already went through them all. I might need to... I might need to discover a couple more players let's see the catchers is georgia dominican pennsylvania i might need to yeah i might need to discover some more players a lot of pitchers illinois ohio i saw two from the east california delaware pennsylvania i'm seeing east and central a lot so let's go i'm also seeing just that was also like all the players but you know what we'll we'll just do the same thing starting pitchers from the east and um we'll we'll bump this one up to two so that means i can all, there we go so there as you can see plus 15 scouting per week because our scout is so good but there it is let's let's test it out for a week let's let me just show you what it looks like all right so it says 25 starting pitchers scouted 19 prospects scouted and then we also discovered three more but what i'm going to do here is scout prospect recently scouted and as you can see, all these starting pitchers are starting to accrue a scouting process, uh, scouting progress. And there you go. That that's the technique. There it is. And uh, it'll it'll go through all of them. It'll start scouting all these different pitchers for you. But there you go. Like, what is that? Like 40 different players that we just went through. And you're seeing some of them are starting to fluctuate between the ranks. But yeah, that's what I did. I just scouted a uh, position by rate uh, by region. And that's what I did. So there you go. So after I did that, what I would do is I would notice if I had like, as I got closer, I'm only at week four of 14, but if you want to speed up the process, like you like the look of a specific prospect, what you could do is like, we only have 35% here. And what I'll do is I'll just assign an extra scout to it and we'll get, we'll get him scouted way faster. So you'll see here, we'll, we'll simulate a week, we'll stop. And it only said we were going to get 40%. So there you go. He's up a little bit more. He's up to 85% now, and uh, it speeds up this process just a, just a little bit. So there it is. Make sure you scout position by a region, and it'll slowly start to accrue up interest and scouting. But then you can also uh, assign another scout to him, and it'll it'll focus on that. All right, we won the division at 97 and 65. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, league leaders Wisniewski with the shutouts and complete games. Ooh, okay all right i'm trying to see if there's like any names i'm actually kind of covering this spencer steer okay see potential but like he looks like he does decent okay that's a name to keep an eye on awards a, a cy young that was it tatis wins mvp along with trout and then you've got mcclanahan who wins his second cy youngs mcclanahan's a good pitcher to get otani wins cy young there manessas just misses out the batting title to bryce harper Trout wins it on the other side. Soto with the Mariners. Ooh. Fairbanks and Evan Phillips are your relievers of the year. And then Kurt Melendez, the guy that was what? Just, just drafted, right? Just drafted maybe the year before. Uh, rookie of the year. Jordan Walker, who as I'm recording this video has been announced to be making the uh, opening day roster for the Cardinals, which is huge for them. And then Panero was, ooh, was he a season one draft pick? I think so. He looks insane. He looks really good, uh, but there it is. There it is. Okay, pitching rotation. Whoa. Okay. All right. So Adrian Sampson looks like he's kind of capped out rating wise, and like the whip is low. ERA is a little bit higher, but not a terrible season. Brock Burke turned things around. Hernandez, solid season. I'll take that. Brandon Hughes, not too bad in 12 innings. Hoyer sucked. Uh, King and Thompson moved to the setup role, and that's not really his his move so maybe we put hernandez here and then tanner hauk took over the closer role killed it love it all right otani is just a really good pitcher to get and offensively he did take a little bit of a step back this year wasn't as good as previous years but still really solid bieber was good in the two spot there we go justin Steele. that's a strong season right there same thing with tyone and wisneski killed it absolutely insane season from him Lineup wise, Brennan Davis did struggle quite a bit this year. I took him out of the starting role and PCA did get called up. Yikes. Um, Magical average is good. It's just on base percentage is low. He only had 50 at bats though. Rio's probably going to let him go in free agency. Kevin Biggio is a really good bench bat. Really good. And then same thing with Luis Torrens. Get yourself a Luis Torrens. Nico Horner. 
Not bad. Not bad. I'll definitely take that. He's my leadoff guy. Swanson right behind him having a good season. Ian Happ, same thing. Really good season. Otani, we looked at already. Seiya, I mean, he's still getting better, so I can't complain about that. Christopher Morel is really putting up some good numbers. He might be a glitchy guy to get as well. Matt Mervis, ah, we'll stick with him. We'll stick with him. Jonah Heim definitely took a step back, so it might be Luis Torrens catch your spot now and then look at this guy right here 280 average and 150 at bats pca has arrived we just got to get that on base percentage up a little bit but he's looking legit all right so postseason time we're taking on the phillies we win that one and we win that one all right justin Steele is going to be here we lose we win we lose we win and it comes down to bieber we advance all right i'm gonna i can't really change the lineup so Bieber just pitched. So I guess maybe if I go like that and then flip those two, I think the lineup should still be okay, right? All right, perfect. So Justin Steele, Otani. Yeah, okay. So Steele, Otani, we lose, we win, we lose, we win. It comes down to Justin Steele to keep us alive. We're eliminated. Dodgers are just being a pain, man. Just being a pain. All right, so Dodgers ended up winning the World Series. We're, we're close. We're close. We're close. I, I can feel it. I can feel it. Uh, Max Scherzer retires. Hernandez is still improving. Let's do like a, a three-year deal. We'll make him a bullpen arm. We'll give him 11 mil. Rios didn't work out. Um, he also just didn't get any playing time the last couple games or last couple seasons. So I guess, hold on. Wisdom's going to be on arbitration, right? Like he hasn't really done much either like he gave us a good year and then pretty similar numbers in terms of ab's and just not not it i might let wisdom go and then see if we can keep rios do i need that lefty bat off the bench we do have biggio but like having that extra lefty bat we still have madrigal who doesn't have a secondary position but he has been taking reps at third base this spring training so i guess i could do that right Rios can be my backup first baseman. Biggio can also play first base. I think I keep the lefty. Ooh, do I really need the three lefty bats though? Or two lefty bats? And then who else would I call up if I were to call somebody up? Maybe another outfielder? Yu Chang could get the call up. Um, who else do we have? Alcantara? Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the lefty bat. One one year. How much does he want? Five mil? E, that's a little bit more than I was expecting, but we'll keep it. Biggio will also keep him as well. Six mil. Leclerc. I think I'm out. Cody Hoyer. He's not really improving. So as good as he was last year and the year before, I'm a little worried. What's my what's my bullpen situation looking like? He's kind of like in the middle. And then Fulmer also had a tough season. So I think I'm going to let these three relievers go. And then maybe just go out and get a, a really good reliever. Because like we have some okay ones. But maybe like a true closer. Maybe a true closer. Let's do that. Spent a little big. Put myself in a really bad budget situation. I'm not going to lie. So pitching wise, I left it as is. Wesneski looks nasty. Tyone's in the final year of his contract. So it's going to open up a little bit of money for us. Hopefully he doesn't turn out to be terrible this year. Cade Horton is making his debut. Right behind him is Noblis, Bove, and also Wicks. So we've got some pitchers coming up through the system pretty quickly. Depth for the bullpen's looking okay. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, the lineup. One big splash. And his name was Vlad Jr. Had to offer him a lot of money. But um, yeah, he's in the team. So... There's our first baseman with Otani, Hap, Swanson, Horner, Morrell, Suzuki, Jonah Heim, and Pete Crow Armstrong. Bench is Brennan Davis, Madrigal, Mervis, Alcantara, Biggio, and Torrent. So we've got depth. We've got a stacked team. We're ranked third for a reason. Like, we got to win. We won 114 games. I mean, we're we're pretty juiced, I would I would say. I would say we're pretty pretty stacked. League leaders Shane Bieber was absolutely insane pitching wise. Hauk with the most saves at 53, and then Otani with home runs, doubles and RBIs, Swanson with hits, Vladdy with runs and something else. We had so many league leaders, we had to get the dot 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 because we're we're leading too many categories. That's that's how crazy of a team we are right now. We're insane. Okay. I mean, sure, we're just that good. All right, awards, what do we got? 
a Cy Young and an MVP. I'll take it. That's that's good enough for me. Even though Bryce Harper did have a pretty good year. On the other side, Trout wins MVP back-to-back -back years. Urias wins it with the Twins. I really like the Twins' new unis. I think they're so clean. And Bieber, Cy Young winner. Harper is the batting title winner along with Nathaniel Lowe. Gunnar Henderson is probably the best prospect in this game. If you can get him, get him. He is so good. He is unbelievable. Um, just, just so you guys know. Reliever of the year, Paul Seawald. Uh, Joan Duran is the reliever of the year on the other side. And then Hunter Gaddis and Christian Encarnacion Strand is the rookie or are the rookies of the year. So I'm assuming this is going to be a little jumbled up. And I wouldn't mind rocking the extra pitcher for the postseason. But which offensive player was sent down? So... It was, was it Canario? No, it was Alcantara, who was okay, was okay. I think that was the only player that was sent down. Yu Chang got called up, so that means somebody else was sent down. It was Mervis. Okay, I see why. All right, let's just take a look and see what we got going on here. So Horton was struggling, so I called up Nobles, or Noblis, or Noblis? Ooh, is it Noblis? Oh, man, what a name. Either way, called him up. He clearly struggled as well. Burke did really well, but he's regressing, so probably a free agent after this year. Keegan Thompson's been fantastic for us. Hughes was really good. Alzali was also very good. Ooh, Hernandez, solid. I did extend his contract. And then Hauk struggled a little bit, but I'm still pretty happy with that. He does become a free agent. We're going to have to be pretty smart with our money this offseason. Okay, Otani, uh, stop regressing already. Come on. Uh, Bieber was unbelievable. Justin Steele is still a strong three in the rotation with Snesky. Looks like he's capped out overall wise, but I mean, he's been really good the last two seasons. And then Jamison Tyone, even though he's regressing as a five, love to see it. You can see our, our prospects and our just our depth at starting pitching is looking pretty good. Lineup wise, Brendan Davis off the bench. Eh. Yu Chang, not great. Madrigal, you know what? 25 at bats did the job. Kevin Biggio still being a, a decent bench bat for us. And Luis Torrens is definitely uh, not done well. <laughs> uh, Horner still doing really well. 350 on base percentage. Dansby Swanson with almost 40 home runs. Where did that come from? Vladdy, 41 home runs. We've already looked at Otani number. He had 50 home runs. So offensively, he was really good. Really good. It's just pitching wise, he took a step back. Ian Happ was still a really strong contender in the lineup. Christopher Morrell still putting up great numbers. Suzuki. There we go. That's better. Love to see it. Jonah Heim put up a, a better season, which is good. And then PCA, I think, is going to be the real deal. Still only 24. And uh, I think that's our center field. They're moving forward. So it's postseason time. We're taking on the Cardinals or the Phillies. All right. We're taking on the Cardinals. And goodbye. They are done. Next up, it is... Okay. So what I'm going to have to do here is because if I move Otani, I think... He's going to get taken out of the DH spot. I noticed that it happened last time. No, he's still there. Perfect. Okay, so Otani's going to pitch this game. We lose. We lose again. Win. Lose. Win. Come on, Otani. Comes down to Bieber. Can he do it? We're taking on the Red Sox in the World Series, and I'm kind of intrigued to see what their lineup's looking like to get to this point. Bobby Witt Jr., really? 96 overall. Verdugo, Devers, Pete Alonso. Vaughn Grissom, they've got Cody Bellinger. How has he been since he left us? Better. Not really. Not really. Kind of better. Shea Langler, Trevor Story, and Miguel Blyce. Different team. They've also got that Kenny Martin guy who's up to a 73 overall. Looks looks good. I would start him over Langler's, but that's just me. So here we go. World Series time. Oh, wait, no. Um, I don't want Justin Steele taking the mound for game one. Let's go Otani. Actually... He just pitched, but we do. Yeah, Otani can pitch. We're going to go Otani, Bieber, then Steele, and then Wisniewski, Tyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. Ready? Game one, Otani. Four nothing. We do win the second, win the third, win the fourth, and it comes down to this. Can we get a World Series? That'd be really nice. That would be really nice. We are at Fenway. Ooh, Otani on the mound. Yeah, yeah, Watani's on the line. All right, there we go. We got the lineup all set. Aaron Nola's on the mound for them. Let's get it going. A walk, double play, Eesh. a single, caught stealing. Okay, way to run into and out. Let's get this 
going. Stolen base, run scores. Oh, a double for Jonah Heim, PCA, bunts. I, it works out, but why are we bunting when I'm telling him to swing away? That is annoying. Another double, 99 speed out there, two run home run for Devers, and it's a three to one game. I'd really like to avoid going to the next game. That's just me. A triple for Seiya. Little sack fly action, double play. Double play? Otani's getting lit up. What is going on here? What is... Okay, Otani's done. Uh, Horton come in. So my ace is just getting absolutely rocked, which is awesome to see. Cade Horton allows another. It's 8-1. You know what? Let's um simulate half innings and let's get out of here and call it a night. Um, we lose. <sighs> Game six. Let's do it. I that's that was gross. That's not what you want to see. I think it said Mitch Keller's taking the mound for them. I'm feeling pretty good with Bieber on the mound for us. Otani is pretty tired. I'm still gonna leave him at the DH spot. Let's do this. Oh boy, a leadoff home run? Come on. Can't be serious. And then he strikes out the side. Oh man, we're gonna go down 2-0, huh? Double play gets us out of a bases loaded jam with no outs. Seiya Suzuki coming in the clutch with the double. Nice. Brings in a run. But then they get two runs. We're going to choke this, aren't we? We're going to choke a 3-1 lead. I would not like that. Fort, what is with our pitchers? Did they forget how to pitch? Where's our offense, by the way? Like, offense isn't... It's Mitch Keller, guys. Like, what's going on here? Okay. Um, Lefty, righty, righty. Let's just go to Thompson. There we go. Love to see it. A double. Perfect. Vladdy brings in one within two now. And okay, first and third, Morel, I need you to bring in the run here. I really do. Gets the sack fly. That's fine. Perfect. Love to see it. Pitch. Single. Single. Um. One run scores. A single again. I guess Keegan Thompson needs to come out, huh? Let's go Jonathan Hernandez. One run scores. I, like, I don't know what's going on with this team. We're just, no pitching's working. Offense is missing. It's a mess. It is a huge mess. Holy cow. Comes down to this. They're going to bring in AJ Minter. Um, I don't really have anybody that hits lefties well. Like, Torrens? Is that, is that who I'm going to turn to right here? I guess so. Morel doesn't hit lefties well, so. Let's go to Torrens. He doubles. He doubles. Let's pinch run. I don't think we have anybody with... Oh, Brendan Davis has got some speed. I think that might be it. All right, let's go. Brendan Davis on second. Swing away Suzuki. He's out. Jonah Heim walks. We're still alive. Um, What's PCA stats for his left? He's pretty decent. A fly out. One run scores. Okay, Dansby. They bring in a new pitcher. Two run score tie ball game. There we go. That is huge. Vladdy walks it off. Vladdy walks it off for some reason. Quick manage still lags, but Vladdy walks it off. Win the World Series. Talk about Wrigley would erupt. City of Chicago's burning down tonight. What a World Series win. Four runs in the ninth inning. That is huge. Who is our MVP? Say a Suzuki. There it is. Vladdy's the playoff MVP with 19 RBIs and a 424 average. Woo. So here's the stats for the season. You know what? I'm pretty happy with that team we just put together. I know it's only been four seasons, but that was pretty good. That was pretty good. That's a team and a half right there. And realistically, who was like, we, we didn't get to see Alcantara. Realistically, who's he going to take over for? Nobody. No one's leaving this team. You know, pitching wise, we didn't get to see what a bunch of noblest, but in the postseason, he was good. He pitched 11 innings, had a 3-9 ERA. And obviously he looks to be a solid pitcher, but I think I think the team we put together here, you know, we've got Steele. He's a Cubs product. Wisniewski was part of the trade with the, ooh, where did he come from? Was he Hayden Wisniewski? Was he the Zach Efros? Was he the Efros trade? Let me see. He was, he was the Scott Efros trade, right? Yeah, he was. So, you know, I'm Cubs product. So Steele, Wisniewski, Tyone, who signed in real life this year, Cade Horton makes his debut. He was a Cubs draft pick recently. Keegan Thompson, Brandon Hughes, Alzali, all part of the team. 
Horner, Dansby, Hap, Morrell, Suzuki, and PCA. PCA was the big one. He came in, provided us a strong center fielder. You know what? I'm going to end the rebuild there. Realistically, we'll join the Cubs back for some sort of rebuild later on, but all four years, we did pretty well, and I'm pretty happy with that World Series win. I hope you enjoyed the rebuild. If you did, thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content, and of course, get in the comment section. Let me know what team you want to see next. That's about it. Catch you in the next one. Peace.